friends, I have my first HelloFresh box that is actually meals for four people. All the other ones I've been getting have been three meals for two people, and this is three meals for four people. I thought it'd be interesting to see what the difference is, and next week I'm actually going to be trying out their family box, which is three meals for four people, but supposedly the recipes are a bit more family friendly. I believe we had a little less choice on the meal choice on that one, and it's lower priced, so I'll have an update on that in my next video. But um, all my previous ones are three meals for two people if you have any questions and want to see what those are like. So let's get this box opened and check it out. Now this is a lot larger box than the other one I usually get and there's always the recipes on top and they always have a little mailer and this is the Hello Perks with curated offers and I'll just really quickly breeze through and just tell you a $15 credit at flowers.com uh, all-inclusive resorts and is there a wine one normally there's a wine one no and this is for these fancy bracelets that track your fitness or something and this is a little promotion that they've teamed up with Jamie Oliver from the Food Network and that he's now going to have one recipe in each week's recipes that you can choose from a little ad on the front here about the family box and yeah so the family box is $105 for three meals for four people with kid approved recipes so I'll be interested to see what those are like next week and then just so you know on the pricing for this the classic box starts at $69 for three meals for two or four people I think it's like 121 if you go to four people I think that's what I paid for this one yeah I'm pretty sure it was 121 and then they now have a four or five meal box which I'm also planning to try uh, in the following weeks. I'm going to try to mix it up a bit because they've got more variety now. When I started this, it was three meals for two people or three meals for four people. And now they've got a, well, there was a veggie version or a regular version. Um, and now they have this four or five meals a week box and the family box. So um, I'm looking forward to trying those and sharing those with you too. These are the recipe cards and I'll show you more on these a little bit later, but they're wonderful. They tell you how much time it's going to take, what level of cooking it is, the utensils, pots, pans, everything like that that you need. Okay, here are boxes of food. These boxes, which I will unbox as I cook each meal, have everything you need in them except for meats. Meats are underneath another layer here underneath the ice blocks. So these are all nice and cold and they come shipped via UPS. For me, they ship from San Francisco or somewhere in the Bay Area, it looks like, because whenever I get a notification, it looks like it's somewhere in the San Francisco area. I'm not sure if they have areas that they ship from all over the country or how it works exactly, but they always get to me nice and cold. This is butternut squash agnolotti, so this is a pasta dish and it is meat-free. This is lemony chicken pillard, and this is Italian meatloaf. Then you remove this layer of cardboard bunch of ice blocks are in here. These are great. Grant just went back to college after the holidays and I filled a whole cooler of stuff with food for him to bring back and had them to these to use. I'll put these in the freezer now. And then here's the ground beef for my meatloaf and the chicken for my chicken dish. So I'm going to make the butternut squash recipe today. And I thought it would be fun though, before I got started and showed you what was in the box, to show you the difference in size. This is a box when you order for two people, and this is a box when you order for four. So you can see that there's quite a size difference because they have to fit you know, twice as much food in there. But I just wanted to show that for comparison purposes. Uh, I don't know what the best way to show this to you is. Maybe like that. Hope that helps. All right, let's open this puppy up. Oh, one little tip, when you're cooking, I always keep this box out and I throw any of the garbage in it so I have one spot to throw it all in and then I can toss it at the end and you, know, you can kind of recycle so much of it, so nice and easy. So we've got two patches of spinach, two green apples, look at the granny smiths, yep. Two little packets of sour cream, if I only needed this much sour cream, right, I'd only have to buy a whole container of it and then I'd end up not using it. I actually have one in there that I started. I needed a half cup of sour cream and I have to quickly figure out what to do with it or I'm gonna throw it away. Vegetable broth, sage, fresh garlic, and two packets of the butternut squash agnolotti. Now real quickly, in talking about costs on this, of course you could go and buy these items 
for far less than what you're paying for with HelloFresh. But you've got the gas to get there, the time to get there, and then when you get home and you put it all away, then you have to find all the pieces and parts. It doesn't all come to you in a nice little box. So yes, we're paying for convenience here, but to put in perspective, you know what? You go out with your family, you afford McDonald's, and what are you spending? I mean, even McDonald's, which isn't even healthy food. You go somewhere healthy, you can at least double that. So, you know, this might not be something for you every night of the week, but you know, on those nights that are busy, it's healthier than doing takeout. It doesn't take that long. This recipe should take me 30 minutes to make. Oh, and you guys, I do have reviews on Munchery and Gobble, which are uh, food delivery services that take 10 or 15 minutes to put together. And uh, Munchery also has an option where it's completely prepared food that just shows up at your doorstep and you just warm it up. So I do have reviews on that and I've got some newer ones on those that I'll be also putting up soon. So in case you're you know, curious about some of the other things. And I have tried Blue Apron lately and I'll do a video about that also. For the butternut squash agnolotti with apple spinach and sage brown butter sauce, they are saying that Agnolotti, ravioli's cuter cousin, hails from the Piedmont region of Italy. These delicious pockets are filled with a mixture of ricotta, romano cheese, and butternut squash. Tossed with tender apple, earthy sage, and a touch of spinach for good measure, this is the ultimate winter comfort food. So, sounds good to me. It's cold and raining. This is supposed to take 30 minutes. It is nut-free. They say it's level one of cooking, and it's vegetarian. And at the bottom here, they show us what is in the box. And really all you are ever expected to have are salt, pepper, butter, and oil, usually olive oil or vegetable oil. And that's all I've ever really been required. Wait, no, no, I need a little bit of sugar once, like a teaspoon of sugar. But those are normal kitchen staples, but that's really all you have to have. They put everything else in the boxes. So now I just have to peel, core, and dice my apples into half inch cubes, mince or grate my garlic, finally chop two teaspoons of sage leaves, and uh, then we'll go on to more of the cooking. So I will go ahead and get those items prepped and be right back. All done, let's go over to the stove. Let me just show you up close really quickly how it shows you what you need. A large pot and a strainer and a peeler. So it's really nice that you can be completely prepared for cooking before you even start. So it really speeds up the whole process, which is so nice. I'm gonna get started by melting two tablespoons of butter in this pan. Let me change the camera angle so you can see what I'm doing. My water's boiling, so I'm gonna throw the agnolotti in. I always keep a pair of kitchen shears around because it's great for opening all these little packages. In case you're wondering, the brand of this is La Pasta, and they say that it's prepared in small batches with unwavering attention to detail. So hopefully this tastes delicious. I have to say, the quality of their items that are packaged that I've used have been really good. Next, we'll add our garlic. Our sage. We just finally chopped that, and I just used one of those garlic smushers and our apples. I was using these apples right away, so I didn't do anything to them, but if you ever have to have apples ahead of time, cut up, you know, they turn brown. If you put some lemon juice, you guys might know this, but if you don't, um, if you put a little bit of lemon juice, toss them in that, like for a fruit salad, that will keep things a lot nicer looking. Now we're supposed to saute this until the butter turns a speckled golden brown. I'm really happy to have this recipe because they sell a really good butternut squash at Costco of ravioli, and I bet you we can remake this for a crowd, and they'd love it. Oh, this smells so good. Oh my god. I'm starving. I can't wait to eat this. Okay, I'm starting to see some brown speckles. So now we have to move to the next step. Now the apples are somewhat tender, and I'm going to go ahead and add some pepper and salt. Next I'll add the spinach, which is organic by the way. They don't send everything organic, but it seems like they do try to do organic, you know, as much as they can. And I can do this in batches. I don't think I'll be able to fit both of the packages of the spinach in here and be able to stir, so I'll probably do one, and as it shrinks, add the other one in. It always amazes me how much spinach can shrink down. Really any of the leafy vegetables, kale, I mean, you know, you get that giant bag of kale at Costco and it turns into this much. All right, let's give this a try. Mm, another winner. It has a wonderful butternut flavor to the agnolotti. And then you've got this little bit of a crunch with the apple. It's a little bit of sweetness, but then you've got the spinach and the garlic. 
super, super good. And I'm gonna try it with a little Parmesan and see what I think of that. I'm a little surprised they didn't put that in there, but maybe they had a reason. Maybe it's better without it, we'll see. But I really like this because it tasted hearty and good, but not heavy. You know, it's not like you're eating fettuccine Alfredo and you've got the heavy, heavy cream sauce. So I really like this. And uh, when I come back to do the next recipe, I'll let you know what my husband thought of it too. So I have to apologize to HelloFresh. I shouldn't have doubted them. It was actually better without the Parmesan cheese. I tried it with cheese and without cheese and so did my husband and we both liked it better without. So two thumbs up, great recipe. Tonight we're going to make Italian meatloaf with sun-dried tomatoes, roasted green beans, and garlic, basil, mashed potatoes. So let me go ahead and show you what is in the box here and also what they told me I would need in order to prepare this meal. They've sent me two slices of bread, two bags of green beans, two potatoes, two shallots, two packages of sun-dried tomatoes, two packs of basil, two packets of beef stock, and two little packets of sour cream. And of course, it's Italian, there's gotta be garlic. As you saw earlier in the video, there were two packages of ground beef. These are 10 ounces each. And this is the 90-10 ground beef, so it doesn't have that much fat to it. Now, for cooking supplies, they said I would need a medium bowl, a pot with a strainer, and I'm just using the one that I have where the strainer's built in, a peeler and a masher and you could always just use a fork or something if you don't have one of these it's you know where you just mash the potatoes i also have a potato ricer and it's like this big thing and you put the potato and you squoosh it i should find that really quickly and show it to you until i just was showing you the other one i forgot i had this so you just put the potato in here and then you smash it just like you know the garlic smasher thingies so it's a nice way to get your potatoes to be mashed without getting them too whipped and too you know, kind of starchy. You know, if you use a blender, they can get kind of over whipped sometimes. The last thing you'll need is a baking dish. I always cover mine with foil to save on cleanup. I just pull this off and then I don't have to wash my baking dish all the time. This recipe should take 45 minutes to make and is a level one and it is nut free. So I need to start by peeling and mincing my shallot, grating the garlic, chopping the basil stems and leaves, chopping my sun-dried tomatoes, peeling and dicing the potatoes up and trimming my green beans. So I'll get all that started so you don't have to sit there and be bored watching me chop things forever. And I will be right back. So I have chopped my basil, my shallots, I have trimmed my green beans, I have chopped my potatoes and my sun-dried tomatoes and my garlic. Oh, and you guys, you know, if you are looking for a good garlic smasher, um, I just want to show you our crusher, I guess. This is awesome. I got this, uh, it was in a pack of a bunch of KitchenAid items at Costco. Like you spent $40 and you bought like, you know, a spatula and this and a can opener and a bunch of stuff. But even if you bought this individually, cause I've seen these at Target, they're totally worth it. I've had this for probably like seven or eight years and it's awesome, maybe even longer than that, maybe like 10 years. But anyhow, you, know, you just put the garlic in here, put that part down and, and it, oops, that was water. <laughs> I just kind of rinsed it a little bit. Um, but anyhow, so, I have to, you can throw in the dishwasher too. It's awesome. Just when you do it, make sure that that thing is out and you kind of do it like this or else, you know, gunk will get stuck. So anyway, not to do a KitchenAid commercial, not sponsored by the way. Um, <laughs> wish I were, that'd be awesome. But um, anyhow, just kidding. I love KitchenAid stuff and I really, my big mixer is starting to send a little, so I've got to get me one of those coming up here. All right, so what I have to do next is I have to soak my bread in a quarter cup of water and this, well, you know what, I should really put the water and the beef stock in first, huh? Um, so there's my quarter cup of water and here are my little beef stocks. I was wondering how they're going to do this because my recipe that I have for um, meatloaf uses, let me put this over here so you can see, uh, uses milk and eggs in it. And there was no milk and there were no eggs in here. So I was wondering how this was going to uh, be done, but this makes sense and probably a little lower calorie. And if you have to be dairy free, this is good. Oh wait, there's sour cream though in part of this. So but I'm sure you could adjust it. You use something to substitute for sour cream. I'm not quite sure what. I'm trying to figure out this whole non-dairy thing because my son went vegan. And so no animal products of any sort at all. He's okay with honey. That's the only one that he, Thinks it's kind of okay, but so I'm mixing up the beef stock with the water. All right, now I'll pop my bread in. Maybe I'll just tear it in half here and flip it. I'll put the 
other piece in. Let's see. Piece number two is in. And all right, everything is nicely soaking here. So I'm going to smash this up with my fingers until a paste forms. So until this gets really nice and soft and gooey. And I will show this to you after I wash my hands. So that's what it looks like. Then I'm going to add the beef, the sun-dried tomatoes, the shallots, and half the garlic and half of the basil. So let me add all that in. about it. I really should have taken my food processor up when I had this much chopping to do. That might have made things go a little more quickly, but I think I'm still going to stay within the 45 minute mark here. So I'm just going to mix this together first and then I'll add the beef. That looks so colorful and nice. Look at that. dog is here at my feet. He's like, I see you're working with beef. He wants me to drop it. Oh, yeah. oh my husband's here. Hey, Steve. <laughs> he refuses to be in videos. We once kind of got his silhouette in one, which was like amazing because he's normally very tuned into like not being in them. I don't know why he's so camera shy. He's very cute. Hungry. He must be just coming by to see where I'm at in the process here. <laughs> Come on, last bit of beef. Okay. I haven't met my dog. Let me show you my dog real quick. Hey, Scout. Come here. Okay. So that's Scout. Scout. Hi. <laughs> okay. Well, let me wash my hands so I can finish this. So now I'm going to add some pepper and salt. to mix this with my hands. It's cold. <laughs> so I'm all done mixing this up. Now I'm going to take my green beans and just pop them on here. And I'm just going to drizzle them with some olive oil. Olive oil is one of the things you're pretty much always using with these recipes, it seems like. I think a couple times I've had to use just a, like a canola oil or vegetable oil. So I'm going to just toss these in the oil a bit. We're going to bake these on this sheet and we're going to have two mini meatloaves next to it per the instructions. And you know, I've never roasted green beans. I've roasted all kinds of vegetables, cauliflower, broccoli, eggplant, you know, you name it, but I've never thought of doing green beans. And I did it the other night with another recipe. I think, was it last night's recipe? Was it last week's recipe? I think it was last week, the HelloFresh recipe that I did not film. They're delicious. Highly recommend doing that. And I even did it with frozen Trader Joe's beans. I rinsed them off and stuff, and I spread them out on the baking sheet, and they turned out great. I'm going to add a little salt and pepper to these puppies. Now I get to get my hands dirty again, and I'm going to make two meatloafs here. We'll have them on this side, so try to get them kind of even so they cook evenly, you know, that they're the same height throughout. And I'll try to make the other one match it. We'll have little, little sister meatloafs. <laughs> it's funny, when I make meatloaf, I usually buy like a giant thing of meat, like the, I like to get that organic beef at Costco, you know, the three pack of it. And I'll make that whole thing into like a gigantor meatloaf. I was kind of worried this was going to be too small because it was only 20 ounces, which is, you know, 16 ounces is a pound. So I was thinking, oh, it's not that much. So I think this is a reasonable amount. But if you had people with really hearty appetites, I'll tell you, Grant, when he was eating meat, he would be eating this whole thing easily, one of these. So I would think that this might not be enough if you have people with really hearty appetites. But you got potatoes also. So it's fair, I guess, unless you're just like eating a ton. So I'm going to pop this in the oven now. It's been preheated to 400 degrees. Now 
next we'll boil the potatoes. i've got a pot here of water. it's boiling with some salt in it so i'm gonna just throw these in and these are going to cook for about ten minutes. give these a little stir. so now i've got to wait a little while for those to bake and those to boil for about ten minutes so be right back. my potatoes are all done cooking. i'm going to go ahead and drain them and then the recipe says to go ahead and saute garlic and the butter in the same pot that you did the potatoes in so then you can pop the potatoes right back in. but since i've got a built-in strainer i'm just going to take a separate saute pan and then we'll be sauteing the butter and the garlic in there. i'm going to go drain these guys. I'm just gonna really quickly here throw the butter in uh, to melt so we can saute our garlic. Uh, the other thing with potatoes is if you're making like a split pea soup or something, if you want to thicken that up even more, if you put potatoes in, if you put them in too early, they will completely disintegrate and they actually give a really nice flavor to the split pea soup. But um, if you put them in, I suggest putting them in towards the end when you just have maybe like 20 minutes left and you're chopping them small because you know then you'll have little chunks of potato in it. But if you put them in earlier, they just disintegrate. It still tastes delicious, but if you want to taste the potato in each bite, just a little tip there. Can you tell it's happened to me? So I'm going to go ahead and add the garlic now and we'll just cook it for about 30 seconds. Till it's fragrant as they say. Doesn't that look delicious? I'm taking my little strainer guy off. And I'm going to add the garlicky butter goodness to my potatoes. Along with the remaining basil. And the sour cream. You give this a little stir for a second, and then I'm going to use my masher. And again, if you don't have a masher, you can certainly use a fork. I just wouldn't use a blender because I think they just get too whippy, and it's nice to have that kind of, you know, a little bit of chunkiness to it, I think. And that was it. Now I'm going to taste it and see if we need salt and pepper. I think we probably will. Definitely do. Ooh, but they're really good. Oh my gosh. Wow. I think I'm always adding basil to my potatoes now. I've had them like that before and they were really good. I don't know why I never do it. Okay, and I'll be hygienic. I'll just bit from here so I didn't touch my contaminated spoon to anything. Mmm. So good. Oh my god. Mmm. I think I just want a big bowl of potatoes for dinner now. I just took the meat loaves and the green beans out of the oven and it smells delicious. I cut this one in half just to make sure it was cooked through because it said about 20 minutes and that is about what it took. I gave it a couple extra minutes but oh it looks delicious. So I'll go ahead and plate that up and then we'll try it. So let's make the lemony chicken pillard with sweet potato wedges, arugula salad, and chimichurri. Now in case you're wondering why now I have papers instead of those nice little recipe cards, it's because I have misplaced it. But the nice thing is you can go back onto the website and print out any recipe. So even if you don't subscribe to this, you guys, the recipes are awesome. I would highly recommend downloading a few that look interesting to you. So let's see what's inside of the box. Oh, and by the way, we have skipped a day. I was trying to do this three days in a row, but yesterday was just exhausting. I was so tired from work. and. We ended up going out to eat, um, but I just also got my new family box. So next video, I'll be in the same outfit unboxing it because it just came and I want to show you guys what is in there in a separate video. I also do have a coupon code. If you want to get $40 off of your first box, which if you get one of the boxes for three meals for two people, I think they're like $69. The veggie one's less expensive. So you get it for you know like $29. Um, feel free to use that. I do get credit for it if you use it um, just towards my own boxes, but 
you know, so just wanted to let you know because it's a nice savings. And i think it's better than when i'm shooting this video right now, what i saw when i just went onto the website to print off my recipes was that they're giving you twenty dollars off of a box on their website. so this is forty, so it might be better. so in this box we have arugula, grape tomatoes, lemons, italian parsley, ground cumin, sweet potatoes, and garlic. so what we're going to do first is prep and roast our sweet potatoes. I need to preheat the oven to 400 degrees, zest and juice my lemon, mince or grate my garlic, finely chop the parsley, half my tomatoes, cut the sweet potatoes into wedges like steak fries, and then I'll toss the sweet potatoes on a baking sheet with olive oil and cumin and salt and pepper, and then we'll roast those. So I will go do a little prep work, and wouldn't it be nice if I could just like snap my fingers and it was done? I'll have to try that. Ta-da, everything is prepped. I have gone ahead and cut up the sweet potatoes into kind of steak fry shapes here. I have juiced my lemon. I have cut my tomatoes in half. I have chopped my parsley and I have crushed my garlic. And I have zested the outside of the lemon. I zested it first, then I juiced it. Oop, dog wants to come in, let me go grab him. The last thing I have to do in order to prep is to butterfly the chicken. So I'm gonna put the chicken breast out on this cutting board and then I will hold it with my hand like this and I'll just go ahead and slice it and then it'll open like a butterfly. Okay, these are going to be some very thin pieces of chicken because these aren't super thick. These were two 12 ounce packages of chicken. So each chicken breast is about six ounces. And I've done this before with thicker chicken breasts, which is a little easier than this because these are pretty thin. Let's see how this turns out. Not bad. There's one. So now I'm going to marinate the chicken. I'm going to take half of my lemon juice and pour it on top of here. I'll add half of the garlic and a drizzle of olive oil. Looks like I need to go grab some more olive oil. Oh, and you know what? I didn't show it, but I did season these with salt and pepper. So now I'm going to toss this so it can just start to soak in and marinate and get all yummy and flavorful while we do the rest of our cooking. Now I'm going to go ahead and make these sweet potato wedges. I'll drizzle a bit of olive oil. I'm going to go ahead and salt and pepper them. Adding pepper and one of these packages of the cumin. So let's cook the chicken. I'm just going to put a drizzle of olive oil in this pan. It's kind of a big drizzle, huh? I love olive oil. And then we'll go ahead and put the chicken in there as soon as this heats up a bit. I'm gonna grab my tongs so I can flip my chicken. Now, the only thing is these should be the rubber tipped ones. I don't know where they are right now, so I have to be very careful so I don't ruin my nonstick finish on my pan. Okay, the oil is nice and hot. I can hear it sizzling. I will add my chicken here. I'll have to do this in a couple batches. So, do these two first. The chicken's cooking nicely. I just flipped it over, so there's what it looks like right now. My first batch of chicken's ready. I'm going to put it on a plate where it can rest for a few minutes. Now I'll put on the next two pieces of chicken. And in case you're noticing, I'm using the tongs for the cooked chicken and I'm using this fork when it's raw. So I'm not cross-contaminating raw chicken onto cooked chicken. I just got my sweet potato fries out of the oven. The chicken's all cooked. And I have my salad ready to serve. So I'll just go ahead and plate this up now. So I'll take a piece of the chicken, put some of the chimichurri on top, add my sweet potato fries, and some of the salad. And I have to say, I was kind of snacking on the salad while I was waiting for the chicken to cook. And it's really, really good. They had me do this once before for another recipe where we just use like lemon and olive oil and salt and pepper. And it's just such a nice light dressing. I don't know why I don't ever think of that usually. So that is a finished plate. Let's see how it tastes. 
So I already tried the salad, which is the bomb. Mmm. So the chicken tastes very nice and lemony, um, you know, with just enough salt and pepper to make it interesting. And that chimichurri sauce, it's kind of, you know, adds the lemon with um, that cumin taste. It gives it a little bit more of a kind of a smoky taste. That's really good. Kind of a little bit of an Indian taste to it. Let's try one of the sweet potato fries. Mmm. I can eat those every single day. They're so good. And the salad is wonderful, so I think this will be another delicious meal. Yum. Oh, and I have to tell you guys, that meatloaf the other night, my daughter did really like the leftovers. She picked out the sun-dried tomatoes, though, because she didn't like those, but she loved it. She loved the potatoes, and she said, make those green beans again, because those were those roasted ones I made before, and she loves those. So you guys, just even buy like a pack for $1.99 of the Trader Joe's frozen green beans if you can't find fresh ones. You know, rinse them off so they're all stuck together. Put them onto the baking sheet with some olive oil and salt and pepper and just throw them in the oven at 400 degrees and roast them. They're super duper good that way. Both kids are gone again, so it was just Steve and I for dinner tonight. And as you know, I loved it. Steve said, keep that recipe. The only complaint he had was that for him, the amount of lemon juice I used in my salad dressing was too much. It was too sour, too tart for him. So if you have people who don't like real sour lemony, and see, I love it. See, for me, it was perfect, but it was too much for him. So I guess err on the side of using less lemon juice in your salad um, and then just add it if you like more or just add it to yours if you like more because for me you know like i said i loved that it was perfect for me um he went absolutely nuts over the chicken and loved it and loved the chimichurri on top and the sweet potato fries oh my god we were mowing those so we got a bunch of leftovers for tomorrow since there are only two of us eating this so looking forward to having that for lunch tomorrow if you have any questions do feel free to ask down below in the down bar and i will get back to you as soon as i can thank you so much for watching have a great day or evening wherever you are mm -hmm.